Hey, a pleasant good day, everyone. Welcome back into the Sports Fanatic News Show. This is going to be a Philadelphia Phillies series, disappointing series. Recap, as we had one good game that got our hopes up after the nice win and sweep against the uh, Brewers to face the other B team in the Braves, and then not so good after that one good game. But we're going to start on the good side, since we always start with the first game here as we go through the series. Uh, in the first game, uh, Andrew, we had six and two-thirds, only five hits allowed on eight strikeouts from Eflin to uh, bring his ERA down to a 3-3-8, and a good two innings from David Hale to close that out. But obviously, the offense um, was the story of that game, including center field coming up with a home run from Odubel Herrera that I don't know how he thought that was out from the jump, but he did a bat flip like he did, so... Boy, does uh, a bat flip every time he does something. Like yeah, he yeah. out, a fly out, a walk. Uh, it doesn't matter what it is. It's, a, it's annoying. <laughs> that's, but. That's, that's a fair point. Um, Bohm singled as well to get a run. Uh, Segura singled, who's been hitting really well. Um, McCutcheon uh, grounded into a force out to get a run. Bohm singled again later. And then McCutcheon singled again later. JT Homer to make it 11-2. to two, And then Odubo had a ground out. So, you see Odubel's name in there a couple times, but I think the big name you see that's key for this team is McCutcheon started hitting a little bit better in the Brewer series than now that's continued to get even better in this series, even through the losing games that we'll get to in a minute. But uh, what stood out to you on top of just Andrew McCutcheon starting to step up in this particular first game of the series? What stood out to me is how good this offense can be and what we expected. It's just a matter of we need to get the pieces in here. Odubel, Herrera... Again, you're on your fifth uh, center fielder of the season already. I think Dombrowski needs to go out, get a solidified center field for this for this lineup, and McCutcheon's got to stay hot. This lineup's unstoppable when you have the leadoff guy uh, getting on base and all that with McCutcheon. Like you say, he's been hitting better. And then when you have a, a center fielder, obviously you have a full eight-man lineup out there, uh, excluding the pitcher. Right now, when you don't have uh, Herrera, when you don't have a center fielder right now, you're basically running out of a six, seven man lineup almost every single game. And that's if everybody else is in the offense. So I think that's the biggest thing that stands out to me from this game is this is what your offense should and can be. It's now you got to go out and get that piece. I, I think this team, there's no reason this team can't win the division at this point if you do go out and get those things. But I think you have to act on it sooner rather than later. But again, I think the big takeaway here is McCutcheon's turning the corner. It looks like Al Bohm's starting to turn the corner after being unlucky for so long this season. Yeah, I, I think, think that's that, the difference with Bohm and McCutcheon. Bohm was very unlucky. McCutcheon wasn't getting that sweet contact, and now he's starting to get the sweet exactly. contact. Exactly, and I think you're starting to see him turn that corner. Yeah, and both of those guys are key. One, because we think he's going to be a future star player for a continuous period of time. And McCutcheon, you want him to either go out with a bang in the final year of his contract and move on, or maybe if he does well and starts getting going, like Shane talked about potentially in the one chase in the pennant we did a couple weeks ago. Um, he talked about him getting going, not this next part, but maybe we would decide to re-sign him for one year and to play that one-year contract game at that point when a guy's towards the tail end of their career. But I would agree with you. The offense was obviously the standout, and I would say Boom, uh, Segura, and McCutcheon, um, because Segura continued to do his thing. JT had a home run, too. But those guys continuing to do their thing, McCutcheon getting hot, Boom getting hot, and then Segura just continuing to do his thing post-injury, which we've seen in the past when he's got banged up. That's when he would get cold again. So it was nice to see him come back from an injury and kind of keep putting even in outs. Good swings on the ball, uh, even in outs, uh, like Bohm was doing early in the season. So it was nice to see that, and Zach Eflin pitched a good game. So Absolutely. that was a very good job in the first game. Um, in the second game, we did have a pretty good pitch game. I will give it to Vinny. I'm not going to compliment him that much because he's Vince. Or, no, no the second game was. Yeah, it was Vince. What? No, that was Vince. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, that, yeah. Vinny had five in a third inning with one earned run. And he did have three walks, but he worked around them pretty well in this game and had six strikeouts. I feel like JT, I feel like they're starting to call a game now where he's trusting. I don't know if it's because of Cotham or something, but it seems like he's trusting them to pitch more rather than just gun it all the time. Like he mixed in more curveballs. He mixed in more pitches rather than just seeming like he was going out there just to fire it through people, which doesn't work, obviously. So I feel like I don't want to over compliment this guy because he always lets us stand. Um, but it's something that has been good, and it was a positive of this game 
that otherwise, other than Gene Segura staying hot with the home run and McCutcheon staying hot with a single, and then Nick Maton, who came in later in the game, had a clutch double, so he stayed hot coming off the bench. Obviously, this game was mostly full of negatives, where I'm sure the big ne- negatives for you was nobody in the bullpen that you put in to try to get a save. Not one, not two, but three times could get a save in the game. So I'm assuming that's probably what you want to zone in on. Yeah, with that question, everyone makes fun of uh, Girardi, and they're making fun of him the way he's using the bullpen. But what else is he supposed to do? You talk about who's going to be the closer, and everyone wants to give Brogdon a chance. So he blew a save in this game. Everyone talks about Hector Neris. He blew a save in this one. Obviously, De Los Santos won't be a normal closer, but he gave, comes in and blows a save. And I think that's the one that's really stuck out, is you put up three runs there in that 12th inning, and then you're still able not to uh, hold down the fourth there. I, I think uh, the, the, the weird thing is the bullpen started off so strong, and all of a sudden they can't do anything right now. I think it's just a matter of time before they turn the corner. I, I mean, we talk about what the front office can do. Well, they went in. You have to give credit where credit's due. They tried. They went out and got a bunch of guys. I, I think it's going to work out in the long run. I think it's just a matter of getting some of these guys going a little bit. I don't think it helps to Archie Bradley. I think he was supposed to be a high-leverage guy. He hasn't been in in a little while, so I think that's going to help things when he finally can get back at it. But I think it's a tough spot, and hopefully they, they turn the corner soon. They're going to have to turn the corner soon. But no, this, this without question is a game you should have won. You should have went on a six-game win streak after this and still had momentum. And we'll get into the final game today, which was basically just a, yeah. just as much of a mess. But Delo Santos right. in his previous outing, he looked different, like how they said he had more zip on his pitches and yada, 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 like all that stuff you hear about pitchers when they progress. But that doesn't make me go, let me put a guy that's basically still a work rookie by qualification because he could never stay up and never be consistent enough to stay up. In a situation like that, when you had, even though he sucks, albeit this year statistically, his last relief outing was really good. So if I'm picking between two guys with last relief outings, I'm picking a veteran in that situation, not a guy that's a qualified rookie. That, that That's the only Who one. Who you talking about, though? I would have just, if you Can't threw in you. more secondary, just throw in more in the first place. He's a veteran. He's not great either, but either is De Los Santos. He's never proven anything other yeah. than maybe that one outing in the major. So you might as well, if they're both coming off of good um, last outings, why you, that's the only one I really disagreed with. The other thing I would have done. But what I would have done, I, I can't remember where we were at in the batting order, so correct me if I'm wrong if we pitched it. But, I mean, yeah, Brogdon technically blew the save the last inning, but it was an unearned run. He honestly didn't look. Uh, horrible. I think I would have maybe tried to stick him out probably there. Could have him. Yeah, he only had 14 pitches. You probably could have at least had him go to 30. I, maybe. I can't remember if they pitched hit for him. So that might have been one of the reasons why they didn't let him do that. But like I would yeah, I would have tried to stretch him out there for another inning. And I know he'd been unavailable today, but with Aaron Yeah, Nolan I think they mount, pitched it back for him, according to this. Yeah, yeah like they did. So that's what it was. So never mind. Nice job, Joe Girardi. He did what he had to do. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is what it is. There's a couple guys. I mean, the whole bullpen hasn't pitched bad. Like, every, you always have them in games that guys pitch bad and make the whole team look bad, stand out. Like, Coonrod did good again in this game. Alvarado did fine again in this game. Kinsler did fine again in this game. It's just Nearest, Brogdon, and Taylor yeah, Santos. I think Coonrod's been your best. Yeah, all had blown save. That's the one other thing that I would have flipped. Nearest, to me, looks best in other situations and then just zones it in at times at closer in this situation, especially coming off of that last save that Coonrod just kind of came in and fired it literally like just gunned pitches past people and just looked like he was lights out. I would have probably put nearest maybe where Coonrod pitched or where Alvarado pitched, whatever. But now Alvarado, I think was because you were more at lefties there. So I would have said where Coonrod pitched and then go, maybe Alvarado, and then used Coonrod for the save situation, just because I felt like with how sharp he was in that save situation, we were going to use him soon after again, and we haven't yet. So that's something that's surprising. The problem is Coonrod was in there for more than three outs, and Nairis isn't a guy that likes to go to more than three outs. So that's your issue there. With it was that. one and a third, one. though. So you only got one extra out. So I feel like you probably Yeah, but they trust Coonrod to, with the lightning force that – to kind of get out of that jam more than they trust Naris just with the different type of pitches. I don't think Naris can go in and get the same situation out like that in a jam. 
that might be true. Yeah, that might be true. But so I, I just looked at it as the hotter pitcher coming in for a save situation. But yeah, that could be true. You're right. But no, I, I see what you're saying. But in that situation, that's almost more important because you kind of would rather Naris get a clean inning rather than coming in there where Coonrod has the better chance to get out of that. And he obviously did there, holding down the fort. But listen, I, I don't know. It's tough. And I think Vince is trying to trick us again with back to back good starts. So I think. Uh, He's trying to fool everybody once again. Hopefully, he can continue. Think about it. If he has another outing like he's had these last two times, he'll probably bring his ERA into the threes. Yeah, that's true. Well, before we move on to the last game, something I probably should bring up since he's been getting work. He's been doing his thing in practice, and Scott Kingery still can't hit a beach ball. Um, so Other than for the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs when he hit a walk-off hit in the first game, but other than for them. Um... Nick Maton's been getting outfield practice. He came into this game, got that hit off of the wall. I don't know how specific. I know when I asked Alex Carr on Twitter, he said he's not sure how his outfield defense will translate into center field. He's not as confident because it's just a completely different position from playing the infield. But they did it with Cesar until they could put him in the infield. I wouldn't be surprised if they think Maton might be more than what was envisioned, just that zo- just that role player Holt, and maybe they think yeah. he's going to be more of a Zobrist if they decide to try to do that. Um, it could be. So, I'm fine with that. Yeah, I mean, I'm fine with it. I don't love the fact of throwing guys in. Like, like I didn't love it with Cesar when you throw him in a completely out of, like, realm position. Like, second base and center field are not even remotely. Like, You're so <laughs> desperate at this point. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's garbage. Yeah, where for Cesar, it was more to get him in the lineup in that situation, where in this situation, it's both, actually, because Maton's hitting well. It's to get him in the lineup, but it's also to just fix your center field issue, which is just a huge gaping hole other than a couple select home runs, one by uh, Moniak while he was up, and then you have that home run by Herrera. But other than that, you haven't had too much. And then you had Roman Quinn before he got injured. Unfortunately, he did get hot for three games and then got injured, so... It just didn't work out there. Well, and there's your best stretch of the season has been when center field has gotten a couple of hits. So we'll see. Yeah. So we'll have to see what they decide to do here. But now in this last game, this was definitely a start that Aaron Nola is going to want to throw in a trash can and not throw on a baseball field. But uh, burn. Um, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> throw this uh, start out. Um and Ranger Suarez is going to want to do the exact opposite. Since I, there's nothing else good to talk about in this game, I'm going to compliment Ranger Suarez. Um, this is a game he's going to want to build on. He's only allowed two hits through two innings, three strikeouts. He did have one walk, but uh, he looked pretty good in this game. And then Matt Moore through two innings looked all right. He allowed the one run, but uh, looked like pretty decent again to maybe come out of the pen for a couple innings if you need it. Um, but she has a long man, just a guy that can save you if needed. Uh, but I think Ranger Suarez is probably the only guy that you could talk about, obviously, in a positive stretch in this game, other than Andrew McCutcheon. Again, uh, Andrew McCutcheon starting to hit again. He let it off with a home run, and then everything went south. <laughs> so, yeah, I, yeah. I, I think my big takeaway is, is the struggle, and I, I'm not worried about him. I think he'll be fine. I mean, everyone goes through a bad stretch, but I mean, Bryce Harper, this this is a series to forget for him. And again, I'm not ripping on the man. He's you obviously think had his a fan- thing could still be bothering him. It could be his wrist, a- and obviously he's had a fantastic season to this point. But after his hit or two on Friday, he he ended Friday hitting 322. He comes out of this series hitting 292. Yeah, that, that's one. That's two games. Like that's and again, I, again, I'm not ripping on the guy. Just obviously he's had a good year, but like that's that's my takeaway is you're so used to him coming up big in, in so many situations, especially the Saturday game. He had a couple chances to come up big in a spot, and he just wasn't able to get it done. And it happens again. It happens to everybody. Yeah. And I think he'll be fine. But I think that's just an alarming. When I saw that, like that's just I'm just that was incredible. I'm just wondering if it's like, I know A-Rod was talking about it, how him and Acuna are gamers and both fought to get back in their lineups on the ESPN broadcast. Acuna didn't get a hit today. He got a walk and scored a run. Maybe his pinky was bothering him because normally he gets at least one hit per game also, yeah. especially with how hot he started. Where Harper, I wonder if it's the same thing. They're both just so much gamers. They want to get back in the lineup, but they're still not necessarily – feeling 100% when it comes to that thing, and that might negatively, kind of like the Chase Utley effect, might negatively affect you, but you want to kind of push through it. 
Yeah. No, that could very well could be. It's interesting. Like you said, though, Aaron Nola, probably one of his worst starts of his career. It definitely was the shortest in terms of pitches thrown. He only lasts 58 pitches in this game. That's a credible feat. Uh, you don't think you'd see that from Nola too much. I think something to note here is it was interesting seeing the lineup mixed up. First time you see Hoskins down at the seventh spot. I mean, that that was – I mean, I, I have no problem with it. You're always trying to find something to get this lineup going. But that's something different. And it's funny, like – you look at the box scores, and like a lot of these guys have hits. You're just not getting the timely hit. I mean, there's only two players in today's lineup by the positional guys that don't get hits, and that's Dubal Herrera and Bryce Harper. So, again, a spot there in center field you can't keep having a non production from. So, we'll see if they're able to get going. But I think Alec Bohm, if he can continue, continue to start hitting the ball, I think he's hitting like six of his last seven games. I know he didn't get hit in the Saturday game. So if, if he can start doing something, that would be obviously big time and some of these other guys. But it, it's head-scratching a little bit, but I think I think it's going to be all right. I think, listen, we just won five in a row. Yeah, you dropped two, but you have an off day tomorrow, and then you have to get back at it. You have to get ready for the first time against the Nationals this, this season, and it will be a fun series and a battle. But I, I think this team will be just fine. I think, uh, again, there's a couple things here and there today, and throughout the series, but overall, I think we'll be able to bounce back. I, I think there's nothing mo- more frustrating than Saturday's game. I, I kind of felt yeah. a letdown game coming today. When you lose a game like that yesterday, you, it just had the, just the way sports well, are. I the next game also, is usually back, a bad one. Yeah, back at yesterday's game, though, I think people got on Girardi more for – he tries to, I think, manage an NL team like an AL team too much, and that's why he does all these double switches. Because he tries to play with the lineup so it fits to his structure in his head. Well, Which you, you, can't his, really, uh, you can't really do that in the NL. That's what Gabe got knocked for. Eventually, the papers are going to come at him for outthinking himself. Because that's what he did yeah. in this game. In the second game, he did a double switch. It brought people up that were not as good of hitters. You took one of your best hitters out of the game pretty early um, in Gene Segura. And then you took others out of the game later. So I I feel like this game, putting in you're putting in guys that can't hit in Scott Kingery. um, This game, when it came to double switches, you did kind of play yourself. I disagree. This is the way you manage an NL team. The AL team, you don't do double switches because you don't have to no 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 uh, no. change the pitcher spot. Understood me. I'm saying I think he's trying to make his lineup. The pitcher has to hit the less, which I get that in in hindsight. But you can't do it with this team. You don't have the people to do that. Nick Maton's the only guy coming off of your bench that's, yeah, and he's a rookie, but that you're probably very confident in when he comes to the plate in an RBI situation. Nobody else that got put into that game, like Scott Kingery, I would rather have any of our center fielders right now in an RBI situation over him. So it's, it's kind of you took out guys that can hit, uh, Miller came in, and then I believe you ended up taking him out later because I think Knapp ended up playing first base, if I remember, when he came in. So it was Alec Bohm playing first, then Knapp. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So I guess I guess Miller never ended up playing first, but no, 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 no. no Miller start. We had three first basemen. Okay. Okay. Miller, okay. Miller started, started the game at first. Then Bohm Bohm switched to first, and then Knapp played first when he came in. Okay, but that's you're making these moves because you don't have any bench pieces, so you're trying to make the most out of it. And yeah, Gene Segura is hitting obviously, and he's playing on another, another level offensively. But listen, what's his biggest knock? His biggest knock has been his defense. So you put you made a yeah, but situ- this year, though. He actually you, one of- you made a situation where you put in your best defensive lineup, expecting Neris to hold the fourth down. If if Hector Neris gets the save, no one's questioning the double switches because everyone agrees with it because of defensive purposes. Yeah. The only I don't reason, think, I don't the, think the, only reason the only reason why we're questioning it is because Hector Neris blew a save, forcing this whole thing to go downhill from there. I don't think that, that's the only reason why these things are, are being and, oh, and then the other thing is, you look at who came in and played second base, and you already mentioned it, Maton. He had the, one of the biggest. No, I would have brought him in. My problem is who you took out. I would have took out Didi. Didi's one of the worst graded fielding shortstops, not on our team, but in the league. No offense to him, but to start this season, he's one of the worst fielding shortstops. Where Gene Segura, and I usually Wait. knock him, actually is one of the better fielding second basemen thus far, surprisingly. 
So if you're going off of that, I would have kept him and moved Maton to his natural position, which he honestly played in the games he played much better than Didi's played, except for maybe one game at shortstop this year. And Didi's one of the guys that cost you, too. His defense is one of the big plays of this game, too, throwing that ball past the first baseman. So I feel like... Yeah, but they, they would have if the, if the right situation came up. But that, that's not the way double switch works. You don't just pick a guy randomly like that. It's got to be the right spot to, to hold the pitcher back from hitting. That's the whole point of the double switch. No, I get that, but then I wouldn't have done it. In, like It, it kind of comes down to a thing. You have to think, is it more beneficial to do this, or is it more beneficial to keep this guy in my lineup? And when it comes to how hot someone like that is, then I just would have never done the double switch. You, you I, don't I disagree. Think- I disagree. You're, you're, you're sitting at a situation where – when you're winning the game, your your best asset is is defense at that point, and that's what he tried to do. Are you better the defense? That makes the defense better because I like Nick Maton at defense. Does, I don't does, like Didi at short this year. Where has Gene Segura's struggles been his entire career? Defense. Yeah, Segura has always been been a solid fielder. You can't predict Didi making that error. You can't pre- like that. You, you can't predict it, but you could foresee it a little bit this year because he's been off. He's even said it himself in interviews that he's been trying to correct himself when it comes to fielding, where I just think it's one of those things that we're going to have to agree to disagree because I think Didi's fielding has been horrific this year. Like, I don't think he's been that good at all. I'm not saying it's been good, but I'm saying Didi Gregorius is a better defender defender or fielder than Gene Zagori is. Normally, yes, but this season, no. I don't know if it's because of his injury. It could be that that could rightfully be it, and that's a very good reason for why you have to – maybe he's adjusting his throw. Maybe he can't throw the way he used to because of his injury, but who knows. But Segura now this year has looked good fielding, so I feel like you kind of took out the better of the two fielders where making your infield defense Scott Kingery for fielding I can buy that since he's worked out and he actually plays enough third now. He actually feels the position pretty well. He can't hit a lick, but he feels the position pretty well where Bohm sometimes still makes those mistakes at third base. So I can buy that one just for pure defense. You're not putting him in the game for anything else other than maybe bunting. But Speed. Yeah, or speed. But I think the whole disconnect that I just didn't like in this game was if you're going to sub some round, I agree that obviously you can't just pick what you're doing with a double switch, but I just wouldn't have done it at that point and then just subbed out. And then if you wanted to do a defensive thing, just let the pitcher spot stay where it is and put in Maton because he's one of your better hitters anyway, whether he's pinch hitting or in there. And you always, and Joe Girardi seems to have a man crush on Nap anyway, so I don't think he cares where Nap pinch hits. He's always seemed to love Andrew, and he's done good under him, so rightfully so. He's gotten better pinch hitting under him, but he seems to be comfortable using him in different situations off the bench. So I feel like you could have put in Maton, even if you didn't do a double switch, if you wanted to do a defensive thing there, where I would have just done it for Didi with how more often. The the other side of it is Didi's hitting isn't as good as Gene right now. Where Didi's been going a little bit cold, that's why he got under the 250 plateau where Gene Segura has still been good since coming back. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Didi's hitting's been kind of plateauing right now, and then Gene's is still really good, and he's been fielding his best, really the best of his career, which um, maybe he just had to take time to adjust to second base. Who knows? Yeah, no, I, I hear you, and I guess you're right. We're out to agree to disagree, but I don't have problems with it. I mean, it's part... I think he put the in terms of the way this game was going, he put the best defense out there, and you see, you see that all the time. I mean, we've seen guys offensively get taken out late in the games for defense. Yes, if he's doing this when you're losing the game, say you're losing by two runs, then yeah, obviously it's an outrage. But he he did what he thought was best for the defense, and listen, I get it. Segura's off to a nice start all around, but if you ask me, who's the better fielder? Didi Gregorius is the better fielder. That's, that's yeah, I just feel double switching. Way. Tough for your best hitter when, but it doesn't matter when you're up by two runs in the ninth. Day. Like, not, like again, if Hector Neris, if, if Hector Neris closes the door out and and gets the save, nobody's even talking about it. Yeah, the but only, also, the only reason. reason why it became an issue is because in extra innings you would have had Segura up. 
but he had mm-hmm. faith in he had faith in the closer, which you have to do, and, and that that might be the biggest thing here. Oh yeah, yeah. But the but, reason you double switch is to adjust the lineup. So if you're double switching, you're planning for the future anyway. So you play you, in this case. Ready, in this case, you're that. winning the games. So you're not playing the future for offense. You're playing the future for your defense. Yeah, I just think that's a rare that uh, that's a that's a hard thing. And to again, do. and again, the offense didn't even matter because you you scored more runs in extra innings than you did the entire game. So the Gene Segura coming out of the game didn't even matter. Uh, he was he three. I would say it mattered because he was three for four. He just didn't happen to be up other than in one RBI situation where he did. No, that's fine, but my point is, you scored four runs with him out of the game. You only scored three runs in the game. So the offense didn't miss a beat. It, it, t- this game was all about pitching. Well, no, this was in the game that we lost on Saturday. So that's the game we scored seven. Yes. You had two in the first inning, yeah. one in the second inning, which is three with Gene Segura. Oh, oh, oh had One in the 11th and three in the 12th. So you had four without Segura. So you scored more runs in this game without Segura than you did with him. So, again, the double switches had nothing to do with this loss. What I had to do with this loss was the pitching not able to come down and close out the door. You had three chances to win this game, three, and you blew the save three times. Well, it kind of that's not that's not Joe Girardi. The that's, one AB for a pinch hitter was Hoskins is starting to go a little cold now again. He's a streaky guy He's starting to go this way again a little bit the last couple game. He pinched hit when two guys were on. A guy that's three for four on the day. I'm I'm pretty high on. Going what would it be? four for five or whatever it would be at that situation, rather than having someone cold off of the bench that's not really that good off the bench either thus far in his career as a pinch hitter. So I think um, that's where it might have played into fruition, where you could have had two oh. extra runs potentially so, there. Who did Reese Hoskins pitch hit for? Answer me that question. I Hector. Yes. So, again, if Hector Neres closes the save, this doesn't even matter. Yeah, but he didn't need the double switch. I don't think it made the defense. But, yeah, but here's the thing. What's the point of double switching that? Because if you thought he was going to get the save, why double switch? Just do a regular defensive substitution. That's the other side of it. If you think you're, if you have confidence in they, your close, they, did the, they, did, they did this double switch before Neres. Alvarado went into the double switch situation. Well, that's even dumber because you're only up by two and you took it. I forgot that it was before that. That's even dumber because you took him out earlier when you're only up by two is not a safe lead in any sport. It, it's not, but hold on, hold on. Nick Maton came in for Segura. He's arguably hitting just as good as Segura. I don't mind Nick Maton coming in. I, I, I mind so, who you took out. So you, you, that's my point. You switched Maton for Segura, arguably your two hottest hitters. Again, you didn't make this for offensive purposes. Like you said, we're going to have to agree to disagree on this. I have no issue with what you already did on Saturday. It's not his fault that these guys can't close out a game. He had three different chances to win this game. The bullpen wasn't able to do it. This was 100% on, on the bullpen. Oh, I would put the game significantly like 90 some percent on the bullpen i'm just saying i think you he done goofed when it came to a couple of the things in the field i i don't i don't think dd's been showing you anything to say he can play a very consistent shortstop in a close game this season in the past yes but Everybody knows the phrase of what have you done for me lately when it comes to sports and all he's done is suck at fielding so that, uh, that's really where I'm at with him. I love him at the plate still. I think he'll get consistent again there. But he might end up kind of turning into McCutcheon, where you have to hope he gets consistent at the plate because maybe his injury, where it did with Kutch, <clears throat> he had a bad injury. Dee had an injury that was not a very good one either. And then maybe their injuries are just affecting their fielding play from here on out. So you would have to hope he can uh, get it going consistently at the plate. But... This is uh, Ben. If you have any closing thoughts or reaction to the Phillies' unfortunate series loss, where they were struggling again after that first game, that they were able to pot twelve runs and then were able to score enough runs, but then, as we said, could not get enough help from the bullpen. Um, and then in the third game, it was just a completely uh, off performance, and they lost six to one. But do you have any closing thoughts before we wrap up here? 
No, I, I think it was a tough game. We're a tough series, obviously. It's a tough one on the road. Like you obviously could have taken two. I think they got away from him partially because of the emotions from the game before that. So, again, I think this team's going to be just fine. We'll get it together eventually, and we'll get things done. And I think Nebraska going to go out and get some pieces. Yeah. My only closing point will be I usually roll with that. I think today could get the best of them after a crap game yesterday because I thought we were going to lose for that reason. The thing is, I feel like you need to have more energy after McCutcheon on the first, not even just the first at bat, but the first pitch leads it off with a home run. I feel like no matter what happened, I don't care if you lost 20 to zero the game before, (laughs) if the dude hits a home run on the first pitch, that should kind of get you going a bit. And I felt like that basically did nothing. Like, it seemed like everybody was still, other than for McCutcheon, where he was, like, pumped up. You could hear it on the mic thing they were doing on ESPN. Other than for one individual, I feel like that brought no energy to anybody. And that's, that's kind of, that kind of disappointed me today. But that, that that's just my closing point. But, everyone, please like, comment, and subscribe. We really appreciate your support. Follow him at AJ underscore Santangelo on Twitter and me at JJ Borick 26 Have a safe, play, a safe, great, and pleasant week, everybody, and enjoy some Phillies baseball this week. We have an off day tomorrow. The Phillies finally get an off day. It's been a while for them, so hopefully the guys can relax and re- rejuvenate and kind of get going into this next series. Because it's not going to be an easy one. You're playing another division foe in the Washington Capitals, which Andrew and I will join you Nashville. tomorrow. Or the Washington Capitals, the Washington <laughs> Nationals. Yeah, there we go. Um, <laughs> had hockey on my mind. The Washington Nationals, who are going to be another tough opponent, followed by Toronto, who is another pretty damn good opponent, too. So, tough two series in a row. We'll be back to preview the Washington series tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a safe week. Peace out.